El Bialy. They are scheduled for six with Bill Clancy as the referee. Protect yourself at all times and you must obey my commands. Both your trunks are okay. I will let punches go at the very top on both fighters. Let's touch close now. Good luck and God bless. This referee's a good referee. Oh, we've seen Bill many times. Right? Yeah, does a good job. Not all of them do a good job, but fortunately, I can say this one does. LB Alley, we just showed some of his clips. He's been in soft. I mean, I like him. He's got power in his right hand. I like his approach, but he has been in soft. I think he's in soft again. I think this 10 and 0 is a mirage. We'll find out. I mean, look at the record. Beautiful. Eckhart, 10 and 0, seven knockouts, warning. Warning sign for me, all but one of his fights in West Virginia. I think this record is maybe, as I said, more mirage than real. We'll find out. Don't go to the refridge. I don't think uh, Mr. Eckhart is going to be around too long. Tried to get some work on the inside. Did Eckhart with right hands there. L.P. Alley comes in. He's a very sturdy, top-heavy fighter at six foot, 176 pounds. Yeah, El Bali will look to end. Eckhart's night and his undefeated streak with a right hand. Eckhart actually weighed in at 178.8 yesterday, which was 0.8 pounds over the limit, the contracted limit. He had to go to the steam room, Joe, and re-weigh at 177.2, took a little weight off. But he had a whole night to get over it. But I don't think that's the problem. I just think LB Alley's going to be the problem. Through your years, Teddy, of having fighters get on the scale, what are the issues when you go to the steam room and try to take it off at the end? Well, the issues is you lose your electrolytes. So you've got to replace the potassium, you know, the source, the electrolytes, the beach, complex vitamins. Do you have time to replace that? Oh, Eckhart. Just landed a nice right uppercut. He doesn't want to get out of here. He doesn't want to be just an opponent. He wants to stay undefeated. And he shook El Bialy a little bit with that right uppercut. You know, Eckhart's been in really, really soft, but so has El Bialy. As I said, Eckhart's been built up in West Virginia where you can build up a record. But there's one thing that Eckhart does have. He has that undefeated record. He has not learned how to lose yet. He doesn't want to give that up easily. Valuable mentality. Zelby Ali tries to go to the body around the guard of You're those free. elbows on hey, the inside. Free. You're free. We're good. He's right there. See, Elby Ali's still a work in progress. That's why my Elby feeling Ali is you got to put him in with guys that are... You know, not dangerous, but durable enough for him to get experience because he's not one of these guys like we're going to have later on in our night in Lubin. You know, the kid Lubin that we're going to have, he's a guy to watch. He was a real, real, real good amateur, 150 amateur fights. LB Alley, good talent, but 43 amateur fights. A little more success right here from Eckert. Yeah. And again, LB Alley living. He's going to look to get that right hand in. That's what he has confidence in. Let's say hello to Todd Grisham. Good evening, Joe. Coming up on Friday Night Fights, the champ is here. WBC heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder is ringside in Biloxi and will join me in a few minutes. We'll ask him who he wants to fight next. Plus, Dan Rayfield will join us to discuss the very latest on Mayweather and Pacquiao's negotiations. Time running out for that May 2nd date. Is it really going to happen? We invite you to be a part of the show. Reach out to me on Twitter at Grisham ESPN, as well as our social media contributor, soon-to-be Boxing Hall of Famer, Nigel Collins, at ESPN. FNF. And don't forget to score tonight's fights on our Friday Night Fights Facebook page. Just click on the app or you can go to FNFVote.com. That's a website, FNFVote.com. And in a new wrinkle, we want to see what you look like watching us. Get on Twitter, post a picture of how you're watching Friday Night Fights. Use the hashtag FNF Photos and we'll use some of the best pictures later here on the show. Up, That's it up. from here for now. Back Second to Biloxi, Joe and Teddy. Let's go. Did I just hear, Todd, correctly, that we are going to have fans watching Friday Night Fights send in photos of themselves so that we can see the fans watching? Todd, is that correct, Todd Grisham? Is that what you just told America? That is correct, Joe. That is correct. In fact, we already have a picture of you that guys is a, watching. Oh, Friday there's Healthy Alley. And that's what I expected. This is more of what I called for when I said don't go to the refrigerator. He's got to find his way back into the ring. 
That is not a safe situation for a fighter well, it's not a that good was sign. just knocked. It's not a good sign when there's two and a half minutes oh. left and the guy doesn't know where he is. LB Alley came surging in, took about a three-step run-up to finish off this fight here. Oh, they're going to let him keep going. Clancy, for a moment, looked like he was stopping it. Yeah, this is the fighter over. wants it stopped. This is all Eckert is telling Clancy. Eckert looked over at Clancy to express something there. You had to assume the communication that Sir, there was no intent to go forward, and now you see the corner having an issue with that stoppage. But their fighter was really struggling to maintain control, and he was really a live target sitting there so exposed, Teddy. Yeah, well, he was outside the ring, you know. That's what you need to know. He's outside the ring, and he was confused about how to get inside the ring. It's not that difficult to figure out how to get inside a ring. So when you see a fighter that's actually used to going in the ring and now he's been hit and he's outside the ring and he doesn't know how to figure out how to get in, guess what? That kind of tells you he's not there mentally. That kind of tells you that physically he's in, a, he's in a wrong place. That was a wild sequence there. The first knockdown happened early in the second round and it sent him onto the other side of the ropes. And it's gonna be all right hands as I said at the beginning. That's where the confidence and the power for LB Ali comes from. And now he's outside the ring. The referee's counting. The right hand, again, set up by the jab. The right hand there. Eckhart, as I said, you know, a built-up record. Just a tough kid, but not a lot of skills. Just willing. Now he's outside. He's been dropped. He's outside the ring. And watch here. Now... Now his corner is telling him. Bottom left hand side of your screen. You can actually see his corner man with the red sleeve there pointing. That's the direction you want to go. You actually want to go back into the ring yeah, to that, continue the fight. That kind of tells you there's a little problem. When your corner has to tell you which direction the ring is. And here's the end of the fight. You know, LB Alley thinks and acts like a fighter. He stayed close. He jumped right on him. The referee allowed him to stay close. Not much of a separation. Hey. That's not LB Alley's job. His job is to get rid of the guy in front of him. Guess what? He took advantage of everything given him, especially after the first round where he got shaken by the right uppercut. He wanted to get rid of this guy, and he did. Let's go get the official particulars, and for that, we go to Thomas Triber. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. 44 seconds of round number two. Our referee in charge, Bill Clancy, steps in, stops the contest. Your winner by way of technical knockout, Ahmed El Ali. So El Ali gets the second round TKO. Teddy, I just want to go back to that sequence once Eckerd went back into the ring. And watch Clancy. All right, so he cleans off the gloves. He comes in, and he gets thumped. And then Clancy comes in in the middle of a surge here where LB Alley's looking to finish off the fight. What was he coming in to do there? Was there some sort of warning? Was there a break? Because that's how you would come in as a referee to actually stop the fight. You have one fighter on an offensive attack. To give pause there, that's to the detriment of the fighter on the offensive attack. Yeah, if you were allowed, the only thing is if you were allowed to give an eight count, then of course he could have administrated the eight count there, but I don't believe that. Well, actually, there is a standing eight count, I guess, here. So, you know, maybe he had that on his mind. But he didn't administer it. He did not administer it. You're absolutely right. He may have had that on his mind, came in there thinking because this state does allow for a standing eight count, thinking that maybe he wanted to administer it there. He did not administer it. He stopped the action. And then, of course, he allowed it to continue again, and it was all one-sided action. And again, as I said earlier, LB Alley, he got shaken a little bit the first round, so he was thinking like a fighter. A fighter that wants to win. He was staying close, and he got a chance to get on him fast. He got on him fast. So the one good prospect to watch out for advances himself with the ninth knockout of his career. We will also see Lubin coming up. Erickson Lubin, who's 8-0.